Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today it's the turn of my Farnell power supply. Yes, it's been a while. I've been really looking forward to getting to grips with this one. This is the Farnell L30BT, which is a 30 volt, one amp power supply. Now this is the L30BT, which means there's two of them in one unit. There was also the L30B, which was just a single unit, and the L30A, which was a 50 volt version. Now this particular one I bought as faulty, it had various problems stopping it from working properly, one of which was the switches which had failed, and there was also some failing caps. So let's get it on the bench, have a look inside, and see how the repairs went on this L30BT. So it's great to finally get the Farnell on the bench. It's a lovely little power supply to work on this one. So there's some suspect caps here, which I'm going to change. They're not giving amazing readings for ESR and they're a little bit out of spec. So I think to give the power supply a nice long life, I'm going to replace those. So there's two on this side, two on the other side, two for each channel. I'll also be replacing that rather weedy mains cable just for safety. Plus it just looks better. And then we've got these switches here, which are rather tired and a couple of them have failed. So I've got some single pole, single throw switches here, which are the only ones I could get narrow enough to fit those really narrow slots on the Farnell. Shame about the little crack in the meter there, but not a lot I can do with that. I can just live with that part of its charm. It's quite old, this unit. It's late 60s, early 70s. So it's done well for its years. It's doing better than me, I would say. So let's get this front panel off so we can have a closer look. Right, there we go. Right, let's put a bit of foam under there to hold that. Now I've already checked these Phillips caps here, which are the smoothing from the power supply. And these large Phillips caps, they will just need reforming, which we'll do on the Variac, we'll just power it up very gently when we're ready to. It does seem like these switches are a common failure point as I often see these up for sale with the switches either missing or having some replacement though. You can see on this Phillips cap here, as reading absolutely fine, I've got no problems with these ones. And the larger caps on the power supply, they just need reforming. They seem to be absolutely fine. I've got no reason to suspect those. Fortunately, I have the Farnell instruction manual. Always great to have the original instruction manual. Love having the original literature. This one's got all the specifications. You've got the user instructions. And of course, you've got the schematics and the parts lists in the back, which is fantastic. It's lovely to see this. This one's dated 1968 down here, which must have been when the unit was brand new. It's a lot of years ago. Now the book I've got does cover the L30A as well as the L30B, the L30A being the 50 volt version, the L30B is the 30 volt which is the one I've got, so I just need to make sure I'm looking at the right schematic as there are a few little subtle differences. This has got a parts list as well, all handwritten, fantastic, dated 1968, so it's clocking on a few years this one. You can see the readings from the suspect caps on the side of the unit there. These are the two I'm going to replace, and there's two for each side of the power supply. So the orange caps there, which are 47 microfarad, 63 volt, originally CCL. I'm going to replace those with these RS components ones. Then we've got another cap just under that, which is this silver one, which is branded as MKL as 4.7 microfarad, 63 volt. So again, it's not giving me a great reading for ESR, so I'm going to replace that. So I'm going to replace that with a polycarbonate capacitor because I have those in stock. Same value, 4.7 microfarads will do the job nicely and I can make that fit. So we just need to take this little board off and desolder the old caps, get those out, put the nice new RS one in, and then let's get that polycarbonate one in, solder those in, snip the ends off, and then that board can go back on. That's one board done, and you can see the new caps there. So that's one side done, now let's do the same for the other side. Take the board off, and desolder the rotten ones. That's one gone. Those CCLs have seen better days. Pop the new one in, great. Solder that up, put the legs off, fantastic. And then let's get this silver one out. That's a goner. And we get this polycarbonate one in, lovely. Now that will give this unit a much longer life. That's it, just bend it over so it fits in the case. 
they give you just enough room inside this unit okay let's get that board screwed back in fantastic so now i'm going to remove the cable clips for the mains cable ready to replace that just a little nut on the top and a plastic clip there's another one towards the back of the unit there i'm going to be using a much more modern molded plug and cable which looks a lot better and is definitely a lot better safety wise so we're just going to strip the mains cable ready to go in now I'm going to turn my attention to these switches. So I'm going to unscrew these broken ones. So you've got an output on off for each channel and then you've got your mains on off switch in the middle. I'm going to be replacing all three of those. So let's take this one out and this toggle switch has definitely seen better days. Yeah, these switches have definitely seen better days. I think it's time to get rid of these and replace them with some fresh new ones. Just what I like, a nice bag of fresh switches. Now these are single pole, single throw switches, otherwise known as SPST. And these were the only ones I could get that were narrow enough to fit the apertures on the Farnell. It has very narrow slots to fit the switches. So I'm pretty limited on what I can get. So I reckon this will do the trick with a bit of creative rewiring. I'm not too worried about modifying this unit. It was already modified to some extent with the switches. So I'm just gonna make this more practical and more usable because I like to be using this Farnell on my bench. I love the big analog meters. And of course, as we know, you can never have too many power supplies. Now the switches I got were the slimmest ones that I could possibly find, but still a little bit of a tight fit. So I'm just gonna file down the case ever so slightly to fit these switches in. So just taking a little bit off each side. It didn't need much taken off at all. And then a test fit for the new switch. Perfect. The new switch is just about fit. There's an ever so slight difference between the length of these switches and what would have been there originally. As a finishing touch, we're going to put some little tiny nuts and bolts in to fill the holes where the original switches would have been screwed in. So I'm not left with just blank holes on the front of my panel. These should do the job nicely and they're stainless. Then to remove the other two switches and file down the apertures and put the replacement switches in. There we go, that's all three switches in. Now my attention can be turned to wiring them up. Now these are only single pole switches, my replacement ones, because the double poles were all too wide for the apertures in the Farnell. So a little bit of modification needed on the wiring. And again, like the E1, as this unit was already modified to some extent with the switches, I don't mind modifying it further. If it was an original unit, I'd be tempted to keep it a bit more original, but I'm going for functionality on this. I want this unit to last for a lot of years yet. And now let's pull that weedy old mains cable out. That's been in there for a few years and it's a bit manky. I'm preparing the new one ready to go in. I'm gonna desolder what's already on the old mains switch. The old mains switch had collapsed completely. It was completely non-functional. It was probably the main reason why this unit was sold as not working. A little bit of heat shrink on the wire and I'm going to solder those wires together because they don't technically need to be switched. We only want to be switching the live because we've only got single pole switch and this will work just nicely. Go, pop the heat shrink on and I'm just going to warm that up with the soldering iron to shrink it into place. I must get myself a hot air gun really. That's done now we need to solder on the switchable wires. The pink and the black is going on the top switch. Again, another bit of heat shrink just to keep things neat and tidy. And also, we don't want the risk of the back of the mains switch shorting out against anything metal inside the unit. Not that it would, but it's good to be belt and braces. Warm up the heat shrink, get that into place. Fantastic. So that's our live on. Now the cable clamps can go back into place. And you can see I've already soldered the earth lead onto an earth tag, which I've attached to the earthing point on the case there. And the front of the case can be screwed back on. We're almost ready for testing. Fantastic. Just got to pop the strain relief on the mains cable there. And then the top cover can finally go back on. Get this screwed in and then I'll give it a bit of a clean up. And there we have our Farnell L30BT back in one piece. I think it looks quite smart with those rocker switches on the front. Now eagle-eyed viewers will notice I haven't replaced the volts to current switches underneath the meters there. That is ideally because I need a double pole switch and that's not going to fit in the aperture that we've got. So I'm either going to try and source some different switches or 
I might do something with a relay which will allow me to use some more of my single pole switches. We'll see about that later down the line, but for now, first thing we're going to do is power it up very gently off the Variac just to help the capacitors reform before we put the full voltage through the unit. Okay, let's put my meter onto DC volts. Okay, so power on. Let's turn the output on. 5 volts. Oh, pretty good. Okay. Not bad. 10. So this is pretty reasonable. Well, that's not bad. It's always more difficult with an analog meter. I'm trying to look at it square on, but that's not bad, is it? 25 volts. All the way up to 30. There we go. Fine adjustment works. Fantastic. Turn that off. Right, let's have a go with the other channel. Right, let's go 5 volts. There we go. Yep. We're good. 10. 15. 20. up to 30 okay fantastic there we go let's see if she draws any current where's my good old 10 ohm resistor put that across the output there we go 5 volts 0.4 amps that's pretty good I'd say Five volts. There we go. Perfect. Yep. Great. Got to be happy with that. I would say successful test. So a future project is going to be these switches here, which I will be replacing. Now I either need to find some double pole switches that will fit in these apertures, or I might use some more of these switches and just use some relays to do the switching. So I've got a couple of options, but that's a job for the future. For now, I've got a nice working Farnell L30BT, which I'm very happy with. So having replaced the problematic switches and the failing caps, and of course, replacing that rather weedy mains cable with a much more modern one, I think this Farnell's gonna live on for quite a few more years. And I'm looking forward to using this on my bench. I love the analog meters on this, and I just think it looks really cool. It's got that late 60s, early 70s vibe about it, which I just really like. And being a Farnell, it's a pretty good bit of kit. So I hope you've enjoyed being on this journey with me, taking this Farnell L30BT from junk to useful test gear. I'm certainly very happy with it. Massive thanks to everyone that's been watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I always appreciate it massively. I'll be back soon with some more tech-related videos, test gear repairs, and retro gaming. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.